nerd family welcome once again to the poindexter lounge my name is enosh aka enosh fett and it is good to have you with me in the lounge today especially because today is a very cool day it's a cool day for me uh we have a very special guest that uh, we're welcoming to the lounge for the very first time he is the author of the meg as well as many other wonderful books uh and uh he's got some really creative new things that uh that he's putting together and has been working on and so i would love for you all to welcome with me Mr. Steve Alton. How you doing, Steve? Good evening, nice. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, man. I have I have followed your stuff now. It seems like, man, I, I, I've always been a huge movie buff. And I'm a, I'm huge into, uh, you know, like I obviously love movies like, you know, Jaws. And I, I love like crypto um, monsters and stuff like that. And uh, I remember when I first heard about the Meg, I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I just remember that movie. It, like, I remember them talking about, well, oh, they're, they're going to make a movie. They're going to make a movie. And we'd get all these, get all these like pictures and, you know, concept art and everything. And it just seemed like we waited forever, man. But uh, I, uh, I am so glad only to have you. Years. Only three years. <laughs> I know, man. But, uh, but I am so glad that you are here. Thank you for being here. And uh, I look forward to uh, our conversation. Now, Steve, first of all you've been an author man and uh, you know i always like to to talk to people because because i've never written a book but i i write you know scripts and i write different things how did you get into writing how did i get into writing well you have to have a story to tell and uh first and you have to be a reader first if yeah. you want to be a writer you got to read gotta love reading books so when i was growing up 15, 16 years old, I was reading, I'd, I'd read Jaws, and Jaws turned me on to, to read a lot, anything I could find about great white sharks, uh, mostly true stories, things like that. Mm. And there wasn't a whole lot out there, but there, there was a, you know, in each reference to the great white, they'd, all, they'd always give a little uh, nod to Carcharanon Megalodon, the prehistoric cousin of the great white, usually with the, the picture, the black and white picture of the, of the six certain scientists in this uh, posing in the jaw of a Meg, yeah, the Smithsonian, but that was really all that was out there. So fast forward twenty years, I'm I'm uh, thirty five years old, uh, raising a family of four, uh, married, living in Florida, kind of bouncing around between different opportunities, um, and uh, I get a Time magazine in August of ninety five that has the, a picture of um, a. Uh, a deep sea fish on it, an angler fish on the front cover. And the article talked about uh, uh, deep water vents, hydrothermal vents, and this whole ecology at the bottom of the ocean that we didn't know existed prior to 1977, when we went, actually went down there with the Alvin submersible. And, but the vent stuff, the vent life really got me. And they talked about the Mariana Trench briefly as well, the deepest part of the ocean. So here you have this 1,550 mile long, 40 mile wide gorge, seven miles deep, unexplored. And I, I started to think, you know, what was that giant shark that I used to read about or, or referenced? Uh, what if it was still alive down there? And so I drove over to the library because we didn't have the internet back then and uh, did about three or four hours of research and came, came to the conclusion that this wasn't like, well, first of all, it's not a dinosaur. It didn't die off 65 million years ago. It was around only about 20 or 30 million years ago and, and died off really, fairly recently while men were still, when humans were out there. So there, there's a possibility that the two species clashed. Mm. And I thought, wow, this would make a great book. And um, so I said, I'd go to write it. And because I already had a job um, during the day and the evenings, uh, I couldn't start working on the book till I got home at night, about 10 o'clock at night, and worked till about three in the morning, you know, kissed the wife goodnight and said, I'll be in a few hours and was just right till I could, I, I, till I fell asleep. Oh, my goodness. Wow, that, 
that that's awesome. You know, I think that that's really inspiring, man, because that, you know, I think it tells people that like, if you have an idea, if you have something to go for it, right. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're on in your career or whatever. I mean, like even as an artistic person myself, I can relate to that because a lot of times uh, I'm, I'm in Michigan. And so uh, a lot of times I, I get teased because a lot of the, like the late night streams, we talk about like a lot of nerdy stuff, movies and TV and, you know, uh, uh, comic book stuff and everything. And, uh, a lot of the live streams I do, a lot of the people that I stream with, well, are all over the world or out West or whatever. And so a lot of times I'm like that midnight to like three, 4 AM, you know, kind of thing. So I can relate with that. I kiss my wife. Good night. She stay, she, she'll come on the streams for a little while, talk to people and everything. And then, uh, and then she goes to bed and then I come up later. So, but, uh, but that's cool, man. So how did you, so if you were doing that and that was kind of your, your thing, how did, how did you break into getting that book like out there and, and published? Well, <clears throat> excuse me, once I had a manuscript, um, I, I went and bought a book, uh, how to get published, you know, publishing for dummies. And it basically said that, um, you know, they're not gonna read your book. They're not gonna read your manuscript unless they invite you to do that. And really, you, so what you need is an agent, a literary agent. Mm -hmm. And so it told you how to do that. Basically, write a two-page query letter, describe your your book, and uh, hopefully they'll be interested in representing you. So I sent out um, I probably sent out letters to every fictional agent listed in the book, uh, maybe sixty or seventy different uh, agencies, and I heard back from about five of them uh, mm -hmm. that said they weren't interested. One guy who was interested was Ken Ashley, uh out in Los Angeles. And he felt that uh, the book would make a good book and movie. But he said, you know, uh, editing, the book needs editing. And editing a book is like cutting a fish. You chop off its head, you chop off the tail, and you start with the meat in the middle. And so um, for a, a fee, he would teach me how to do these things, sort of like a, a, a mentoring program. Yeah. And then he would represent what we had when we were done. So I paid him. A, I didn't have the money, but I had a, a, a my 71 Chevy Malibu convertible. My dad had bought me when I was 17. Had like 200,000 miles on it, but it was a classic. Fixed it up a little, sold it, used the money and some other money I borrowed to pay for editing fees. And then, you know, we edited the book together. It taught me a lot of things. And then on Friday the 13th in September 1996, I was working at a wholesale meat company as, a, as the general manager there. I know nothing about meat at all. It's, it's a, a separate story in itself. Um, and I uh, went to work and the family, this crazy family ran this place. And uh, they said, we don't need you anymore. So I said, okay, fine, thank you. And, and went home and had about 45 bucks in the bank. And my wife was upset and she said, uh, I said, I mean, don't worry, this is the best thing that could have happened. Now I can focus on writing my second book. <laughs> and she about uh, threw a frying pan in my head. Uh, four days later, uh, the manuscript for Meg went out to the six biggest publishing houses in, in New York. And uh, buoyed by the fact that we had already had a first look deal with Disney's Hollywood Pictures, uh, garnered a two book deal for seven figures. Wow. So I went from the crap house to the penthouse. My and, goodness. And back to the crap house another year later when I ran into some problems with my second book. Um, uh, Double Day was it's another, you know, my, my uh, I hate roller coasters, Enosh. And mm -hmm. my, but my entire career has been a major roller coaster, very high and then crashing back down again and on and onward. And, mm -hmm. and uh, but you take bad with the good, I guess. Absolutely, man. I think that that's one of the things I've learned just, yeah, man, through life, you just, you know, you enjoy the highs and you enjoy the lows. And I, I that, that's an amazing story. Cause like, I didn't, I did not know that about you. And so I, I can really relate with that because in all the things that I've done, I mean, I've been a musician. I, I've uh, my whole life, I've, you know, always done artistic things and stuff. And, um, and I'm, uh, and it's interesting because my wife and I talked about this, like there's many times where something would happen like in one day and it would seem like the whole bottom was dropping out, but you, you press on <laughs> and you make it to the next day and all of a sudden things are good again. Yeah. Well, what happened was um, uh, to 
continue the story, May went on to become the book of the uh, 1996 Frankfurt Book Fair, uh, which is the largest book fair in the world. And we saw, and Doubleday, who was the publisher for Jaws 25 years earlier. Yeah. Um, you know, they um, sold the, the, the international rights to about uh, another 23 countries and for, you know, well over a million dollars. And, and so things were looking good. And then uh, I started my second cup, the, the second book, the concept was for the Mayan calendar's doomsday prophecy, um, which is my domain series. And, but what happened was, is um, Doubleday didn't want me to become a Mayan author. They wanted me to stick with the sea. And so they kept trying to pull the story back underwater again. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to write a Mayan doomsday prophecy. And they were getting me to write another cre sea creature book. You know, the uh, president of Doubleday, Arlene Freeman, took me out to lunch and she said, you know, we, we want we want you we're trying to position you as the next Peter Benchley. Mm. And I said, you know, I'm flattered. You know, I'm a big Benchley fan, but you know, I, I want to write about other things besides underwater stories. But there was a lot of money at stake. So I gave them what they wanted. And we were about to move into a, a brand new house, you know, our dream home. In fact, we moved in three months uh, later. Uh, it was in December and two weeks, I handed in the manuscript and all of a sudden I, I stopped hearing back from my, my uh, editor at Doubleday. He wasn't responding to any of my calls and they were due to make a, a huge payment to us about you know close to seven figures for the second book and they canceled the book. Uh, turns out the president of Doubleday was um, trying to save her job Doubleday was uh, being taken over by Bertelsmann and uh, there were a lot of front loaded contracts were dumped and mine was one of them. Mm. And so, you know, we just moved into a new house and I realized I'm not gonna be able to afford it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, you, you feel like a wallop in your stomach, but you try to keep it under pers in perspective. You know, there are people, there's war going on in different areas of the world. That, you know, people are dying and- yeah. You know, I heard on the radio, you know, some uh, a young child drowned in a swimming pool accident. This is horrible stuff. So you try to keep your problems in perspective. But, you know, when these things happen a lot, that's where you get Parkinson's. You know, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's 15 years ago and probably yeah. the stress and things like that. But, you know, that's what it is, what it is. Yeah. Uh, but um, in the movie, we had option to, uh, to uh, Disney's Hollywood Pictures and they went through two different screenwriters uh, and the screenplays were god awful. You know, the screenwriters decided they were gonna to try to get as much credit for the project as possible. So they, in order to do that, they have to change like the rules with the writers goes that you gotta change like, you know, 60% of the original material. It's crazy, it just ensures that the book and movie were not gonna be alike. But um, then the president of Hollywood Pictures got fired and the incoming president never takes on the old guy's project. So mm. the rights to make went in reversion. And then they stayed in reversion until 2005 when I, a um, friend of mine, Nick Nunziata, who's uh, the founder of Chud.com, uh, he took the book to a, a couple of friends of his who were the producers and director of Hellboy, uh, Guillermo del Toro and Lloyd Levin. And so they optioned it for like a dollar and, to represent it. And they took it out to New Line Cinema with a script that I wrote with Jan Debon, who was going to be the director. And Jan had done Twister, a really good guy. Mm -hmm. And so we, we got managed to get an option at New Line Cinema. And the first thing they did was they uh, brought in their own screenwriter. And he uh, took the story into Moby Dick land about a giant white shark like Moby Dick that was being hunted by whalers. Why whalers? I, I don't know. And why are the whalers off the California coast and they're Japanese whalers? So <laughs> it was that was uh, another uh, downward slope on the roller coaster. Um, his scripts got turned down, and uh, the the uh, they went into reversion two years later. And at that point, I had met um, a close friend of mine now, but I just met her, uh, Bell Avery, who was a uh, producer whose forte was raising money and Bell optioned the movie as optioned the, the 
theatrical rights along with the lock. And uh, she went out to find money. And it's not easy to do in Hollywood when you have a, a movie that's already been in reversion twice. Yeah. Turned down by two different studios. But she wasn't going the studio route. She was going to go independent. So it took her eight years, an awful lot of money, investment of time. And but she managed to, to get um, Gravity Pictures with, from China aboard as a production company. And they put up uh, 150 million for May. And with our script, Bill and I wrote a script together. And that wow. to this day, that's the best script out there for May. Uh, wow. But uh, of course, uh, they brought in new screenwriters who, you know, tweaked the story here and there and changed a few other things and Hollywoodized it. You know, they did a pretty good job, but uh, it's not as good as ours was. But, but it's still pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, what, what what is what is that like? So you you write a book because I because we have to talk about that. I mean, we we've, we've got a lot of people who watch who watch the channel who who are who are writers or they're you know they they enjoy that. We talk a lot about movies, and so it's really interesting to hear your side of that because you know a lot of times it's us as fans looking at uh, you know movies or reading a book, for example, and then you see the movie and you're like, how how did this become this? You know, and like you said, it's like you, you get all these people involved and they're they're really not trying to serve the actual art. They're not trying to serve what you what you've made. They're trying to make it their own. Um, I mean, is 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 that discouraging to to kind of come up against that? Because here you wrote something that's really connected with people. And that's kind of why you're here in the first place. You know, like, how do you how do you process through that and get through that? Well, <clears throat> with. um the third attempt, which was, uh, of course, optioned by Warner Brothers. Um, you know, you've already, I've already been through, um, you know, 18 years of denials, <laughs> two, yeah. two turndowns, scripts that were god awful. Um, and so everything was, you know, it was a night and day situation. It was a lot better the third time around. And mm -hmm. plus, Bell was my advocate. You know, the, what the reality is, is that as an author, once I option my property, I'm they no longer have to deal with me. So I, they don't even want input from me, which was a little disappointing mm. because there were things in, in the first act that I could have definitely done, given them advice that would have made it a little bit better. But, mm. you know, it is what it is. And, and you go on and, and take the bad with the good. And there's a lot more good than bad. Yeah. Well, I know, like I said, man, I, I remember being a young man and reading the first those first articles about about the the Meg movie was coming. The Meg movie was coming, and seeing some of those uh, some of those things. And I'm not able to use Streamyard to pull them up, but I I have some of those original photos that and I'll I'll re-edit them in uh, for everyone to see at home. But I mean, I remember seeing those pictures of the shark coming through the waves with the with the with the surfer, and I mean, and just a lot of those uh, a lot a lot of that concept art, and just thinking, man, I want to see this movie because, like you said, like I was a I was a big fan of Jaws. You know, I've got I've got Jaws. Uh, you can tell I got a room full of toys. So I've got I got Jaws toys and stuff. And and it's and this I, I kid you not, this is not a, uh, um, planned at all. But I'm a big DC Comics fan. And the other night we were doing something, we were talking about something. And I just happened to have my King Shark figure right here <laughs> next to me. I kid you, that's a total coincidence. But uh, so like I, I love stuff like that. And I, and I remember you, just you rooting see, for your movie. You see uh, my um, uh, poster for Shark Man back there. Yeah so yeah I no i was thinking i was thinking about that when i i was like because I, when i sat down here and i was wait, we were waiting to connect i was like that's funny because you got the shark man thing going on uh but i remember rooting for your movie man i remember rooting for 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 this thing to get made for years and talking to people and there were a lot of people who never thought it was going to get made and i just kept i kept rooting for it. i was like man i want to see this thing made i want to see this this shark movie and look there's been a lot of cruddy shark movies over the years <laughs> you know some an entire series purposely cruddy <laughs> yeah oh shark exactly Baker. well well it's funny because that's how my my wife and i started our, our youtube channel actually was because we had watched the first two uh sharknado movies and we were watching the third one and i was just like this is so ridiculous and over the top this is so crazy and we were laughing our butts off because because, you know, that that is one of my things like I, I really appreciate about your work because you aren't just trying to just give us a big shark just to give us a big shark. 
You know, there, there's so much more that you put into it as far as the science behind it. Like, how could this happen? How could this shark exist? You know, and putting that out there where a lot of these movies, like they're, they're just they're just trying to cash in on the big shark, you know, and, and show us some shark thing. And uh, but my wife, it was funny how we even started our YouTube channel, Steve, was my wife turned to me and said, this is so ridiculous. We should do a review of this and i had the youtube channel but it was just to upload videos and stuff and so we did this 25 minute like ridiculous over the top review of that but man i like i said i i rooted for uh for your uh for your movie to get made for so long so when i finally heard that meg was finally getting made and i was i was over the top ecstatic we were there opening night man and um just really great to see i i really enjoyed it and i know that you know like you said things go through changes and stuff but um but i i was really impressed with it thank you i appreciate your wife's support and your support absolutely man uh and i i can't wait now now there's there's talk they're making a sequel yeah they're making a sequel uh made to the trench uh how much it's based on the second book i'm not sure at this point because they never let me see a script hmm. uh but um you know, I'm, I'm, I'm told that the script is really tense and uh, they're bringing in another star uh, and uh, that I can't discuss, but um, sure. Uh, should, they, they were supposed to go into production um, a year and a half ago, uh, but COVID hit and just um, wiped out every movie going into production and not only the Meg too, but um, the lock. Uh, so those things are finally going to go into production. Uh, Meg 2 should go in uh, January of 2022 and uh, the lock shortly after. Well, that's that's awesome, man. Well, I, t I tell you what, you I, I know, like, you know, say with with your with your stuff that you put out with with Megalodon. I mean, that's that's helped to definitely put it out in the public vernacular. I mean, just even a couple of weeks ago, there was a big uh was it a basking shark that passed by a, a boat and people oh, were yeah, yeah, yeah. And people were, you know, and, and every time I see that, I think about you because I, I honestly think, you know, like, like you said, it's, it's not something that I think was out there for everybody, but you know, you have these little things here or there, but because of your book, because of your uh, you know, your perseverance and in, in trying to get that out in the movie uh, you know, now it's out there. So every time we, and I, I love theorizing about it. You know, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. What, what do you think? Do you think it's possible? I always say that um, it's definitely possible that, you know, we only know about, we've only explored 5% of the oceans and less than 1% of the deep water. So we don't really know what's down there. And Megalodon was not like a dinosaur. I mean, this thing did not just up and die because a meteor hit us. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it was around... It's time was the Miocene, which was about 30 million years ago to about 2 million years ago. And uh, it was the most dominant predator out there. So, and there's no reason that water temperature or anything like that would have affected this creature. Large sharks uh, have gigantothermy, which is a, a method of um, using blood vessels to get the, uh, the blood into the extremities so that they don't suffer from the cold. So there's no reason, it, and there was plenty of food around, plenty of whales. So there's no reason why these sharks would have disappeared other than uh, the fact that orca became dominant and orca pods could take down a meg if they could get to it because whales can only dive, killer whales can only dive about a thousand feet, if that. And um, megs, of course, could, like sharks, they can go as deep as they need to. Mm -hmm. So, which is a logical reason they would have gone deep and maybe who knows, had a hydrothermal vent colony down in the trench. Well, I'm, I'm like, you now, and I have to ask you a question. Have you ever, cause, cause this is one thing I've loved great whites my whole life. I've loved the idea of, of that. Have you, have you had the opportunity to go swimming with great whites or, or be in a cage or be around that? Because that's one of those things. Like I always, I always look at that and I, I mean, my goodness, Jaws scared me to where I was like scared as a kid to even swim in a swimming pool, you know. Uh, but uh, I always think about that. And I, I've got friends who've wanted me to go with them before, you know, and go in a cage or whatever. It's like, I don't know that I have the guts to do that. Have you ever, have you ever done anything like that to experience that or yourself? Well, the irony of a, the Meg author dying in a cage surrounded by great whites is just too much to <laughs> tempt the fate. So, no, I have no interest in putting myself out there except... And, he, you know, talking about irony, except Sea Monster Cove, 
that's all about our VAEs, our, our uh, virtual aquarium experiences where we get, where you can go into a cage with all these sea monsters and giant sharks. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about that. I, I do want to ask you one quick question before you, because you mentioned the lock. And so if there's one other thing that I'm really, I've always been a fan of is the Loch Ness monster. I, you know, like that, that whole, that whole thing. And, and like the, the, the cryptozoology stuff is, it's really fascinating to me. Can you tell everybody a little bit about the lock? You said now that, that that's going to be a movie and go and is going into production. Can you just tell us a little bit about that for those who may not know about that? Uh, yeah, the, I think the lock was my, uh, seventh or eighth book lost track, but, um, my manager had pushed me to write a book about the lot, this monster. And, and my initial reaction was, yeah, but that's kind of silly. And, you know, I, I, you know, I'm writing science fiction and, you know, I don't believe that it's a plesiosaur. It can't be a plesiosaur because a plesiosaur is 65 million years old. And so that's just, but then I started doing some research and I talked to a friend of mine, Bill McDonald, who's a cryptozoologist. And he had been over there about a half a dozen times. And he said, Steve, I know what it is. And I'll give you my research. And um, I love this stuff. He was dead on, right on top of it, what the mm. creature was. So what? So the, when I wrote the book, I decided that I've got to show the uh, the tourist industry, which is pushing this plesiosaur bullshit on us. Yeah. And the real Loftus monster, which is actually uh, a fish that is nasty and amphibious. And, you know, basically they come from the Sargasso Sea into Loch Ness, mm -hmm. uh, the females do, and where they, um, you know, they they get pregnant and then uh, go back to the Sargasso Sea to have their, to birth their, their, their young. But uh, if they don't get back to the Sargasso Sea, that birthing their young is actually what triggers their death. So if they don't get back to the Sargasso mm. Sea, they just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so that's the basis of the creature in the lock, this book. And uh, the hero, Zachary Wallace, is, is sort of the inverse of Jonas Taylor. He's um, Jonas Taylor is a man of action who had a switch to becoming an academic mm -hmm. to prove his case. Uh, Zachary Wallace is an academic who had a switch to being a hero, which didn't fit his profile very well. Well, I, I, I'll be honest with you. So I'll, I'll be transparent with you. I have not read the lock, but it's, it's like, I, I the older I get, it's like, I, I have, I have to get stuff on like audio book because I'm, you know, we get so busy at everything, but uh, I mean, but when my, in my younger years, man, I just read and read and read and read and read. And, uh, but I, I've always been fascinated with the Loch Ness monster. I've always been fascinated with that idea. And like you, just like you, it's like, you sit back and you go, oh, okay, this is kind of silly. The whole plesiosaur thing, you know, and, and all that stuff. And it's like one of those things, I don't know, from, from a, a fan of that kind of stuff, you want stuff to exist. You want stuff to happen. Uh, but I love new takes on that. And I think that it's been long overdue for there to be a really good story about the Loch Ness monster like that and and for us to as especially for a, as a movie you know something really done done well so uh yeah i don't think there's ever been a good movie of block this monster and i think, this, this I, think one, it. I think one night at like three in the morning i woke up and there was like something was it the Loch Ness massacre or something like that <laughs> it's like yeah, a that, you know to dance and did one they always revert back to the disney friendly Dino and, and yeah. wagging its tail and taking people for rides on its back and you know, it's all nonsense. Yeah. But Hey, that's something uh, everybody can look forward to. Uh, so we got the Meg two to look forward to. We've got uh, that to, uh, to look forward to with the lock. Uh, and then you have now this, this big project that is uh that is pretty cool that you turned me on to. I had no idea when I first contacted you and you said, Hey, check this all out. And, uh, and I spent some time watching these things that you go, but that's Sea Monster Cove. My name is Dr. Max Rustin. I specialize in marine neurobiology. Some years ago, I made a discovery that changed my life forever. I don't think anyone measures the consequences of what lays ahead of us. Or greed. Our recklessness will be your end. 
This is my story. Welcome to Meg Island. I, I think it's so cool that like, I, I know that you said like they tried to push you in this underwater thing, but you do this so well. I mean, you just really have a, a, a great knack for this. So tell us what Sea Monster Cove is. Well, uh, the idea came to me at a very difficult time in my life. I was struggling with Parkinson's and I was struggling with money issues because COVID had pushed back uh, and, and a few other things had pushed back um, the production schedule on Meg 2. Mm -hmm. And I was relying on that money to, to you know feed my family. And the fact that it got pushed back a year and a half was very difficult. Plus the fact that the publishing industry has changed so much over the last 25 years that I've been in it, uh, you know, advances used to be really six figures. Now they're, they're barely four figures mm. um, because of the, the fact that Amazon has just, you know, obliterated the entire book industry mm. um, and so, as well as other industries too. So, um, and that, that has a, uh, you know, an effect on authors too, you know, as the, uh, there's less, less and less retail space out there. So there are less and less uh, books in, in stores. And so I realized that, you know, I'm, I get, I'm not gonna be able to write books anymore. I should have just gonna do this. I'm not gonna be able to write books anymore because um, I can't afford it. If mm -hmm. it takes me, uh, you know, I, I don't have any assistance. I don't want any assistance. Um, for me, I have to do all my own research and because my books are so researched, it takes me a year to a year and a half, sometimes two years to write a book. Well, if I'm only get, getting paid, you know, <laughs> $500 a month, I'm not, not going to pay my bills. Yeah. So I needed a new sense of income, a new, a new uh, source of income. But I woke up one morning, um, like four in the morning, late December, and I was just, I was like, perfectly tranquil, perfectly at peace. And, you know, with a blank mind, like I was in the eye of a tornado. Hmm. And um, these ideas just started going into my head about a new storyline for a, a prehistoric shark and sea monster. Uh, it, it didn't feel like a book. It felt like a, a, a TV series. And uh, as these ideas kept coming into me, I was laying there. I thought, you know, you better get your ass up into your office and write this down because if you fall asleep, they're gone. Yeah. And so I dragged myself upstairs four in the morning and started doing research and found the location of an island I had never heard of before, but it sounded like Meg. It was Mog. And um, it was the perfect setting for this story. And from that point on, Almost every morning I would wake up between four and six in the morning and there were new, more ideas coming into my head. And, uh, you know, at the end of a couple of months, I, you know, I started writing this uh, TV series and I realized, wait, so this has to be more than just a TV series. I want to see what these creatures would look like if they were in these uh, futuristic aquariums. Mm. And so I started talking with my assistant about, I thought, you know, this is very, this is really risky. It's never been done before, but I'm all about taking risks. And uh, I, not that I want to take risks. You know, I'd rather, be, <laughs> yeah, well, sure. I'd rather every be, things be financed for me for a change. But yeah, you know, I was going to take a role at it and realize that I could create something that has never been done before. A way to look at a story and surrounded by different methods, different um, uh, formats. Um, and so Sea Monster Co. was born, and, and uh, if it's okay, we'll, I'll show your audience. Yeah, a little absolutely. Preview. So here we go. So, uh, so this is Sea Monster Cove. Now, uh, kind of take us through this. Well, this is a little video introduction. When you go to SeaMonsterCove.com, you'll come to this page, and it gives you a little idea what the uh, website's about. With a click of your mouse, we'll transport you to a five-star island paradise where you can spend endless hours visiting the most advanced aquariums ever designed, harboring the most terrifying prehistoric sea creatures in our planet's history. 
You can watch them from the safety of an observation deck. Or, for the ultimate experience, we'll serve you up in a cage and lower you into their domain, where you can get better acquainted. After your cage experience, you'll probably need a few uninterrupted hours of peace and quiet. No worries, we went ahead and reserved a private suite for you at the Black Demon Inn, one of our two five-star luxury hotels. Every suite backs up to the Aquarium, where we keep our star attraction, Snowflake, our 63-foot, 50,000-pound, prehistoric albino mako shark. And only members of SeaMonsterCove.com will have access to watch our brand new original web TV series, Where Sea Monsters Roam, written and produced by Steve Alton, author and creator of The Meg. All you gamers are going to love playing the Sea Monsters Roam video game where you must hunt and capture these toothy creatures of the deep in the ancient aquifer that has kept them alive. As a special bonus, we've just added a second new video game called Run Layla Run, where you play Snowflake's sibling, Layla, as she attempts to escape the ancient aquifer through a lava tube to make it back to the lagoon before other sea monsters devour her. We track the top 10 performers on a weekly basis and even offer prizes. Each month we'll be adding new sea creatures and virtual aquarium experiences. And don't be surprised if you happen to run into a celebrity or two. Hey everybody, this is Mur from the TV show Impractical Jokers. I'm so excited. I'm here spending my vacation at Sea Monster Cove. This is so exciting. I'm dear friends with Steve Alton. He invited me personally to come down today. Look at this. I can't wait to like see a fish or something. Maybe there's something. What the hell? Is that real? That's not real. And be sure to check out our private library, the only place in the world where you can enjoy color-enhanced versions of any Steve Alton thriller. We even offer curricular materials to teachers and parents interested in setting up distance learning programs. By now, you're probably wondering how much all of this is going to cost you. That's the best news of all. VIP. All-inclusive memberships are only $9.95 a month. Hey, Chuck Corot here at the new Cretaceous Habitat at Sea Monster Cove. That's me in the cage. Yep, either crazy or stupid or a combination of the two. Hey, listen, I'm risking my life to make a special announcement. Sea Monster Cove is now offering a limited number of Club Mako discount memberships for only $4.95 a month for the entire household. Listen, that's $4.95 for unlimited 24-7 park access, all of our virtual aquarium experiences, unlimited play on our two new video games, our private library of enhanced Steve Alton novels, and not one, but two new TV series in development. Go to www.seamonstercove.com and grab one of those Club Mako memberships before they get devoured. Hope to see you soon. See you later, Big Mama. What's all this gonna cost? <laughs> well we originally uh started the uh website um in august of last year uh for 995 a month and we've cut the price in half only 495 and you get all this and a lot more we're, we're um, next week we're introducing the first of two video games uh which is called run layla run uh it's pretty wild game and then a couple of weeks later our second video game is going to come online which is where sea monsters room uh we've got a number of other new things scheduled to come out in the next month or so uh we were we're trying to get that we're in uh negotiations with some people for the two web series and so there's an awful lot going on here um take a quick for a quick tour here uh when you click on mall island it gives you a history of the uh the story, 
Morgan is uh, this this uh, volcanic island in the uh, Mariana Islands, and it tells the story of uh, Dr. Maximo Rostan. Uh, I'm not going to go through that alternate today because there's just so sure. much there. Yeah. Then you can do one of our um, virtual aquarium experiences. Um, This is the uh, Sea Monster Cove. There's six of these habitats here, and we have a number of them open. We just are opening the Cretaceous next week. Hmm. Let me click on the Jurassic here. Uh, this is um, this is actually a video, not one of the virtual experiences, of um, the day that we brought the dunk home. <laughs> Give you a quick taste of this. And I'll show you a virtual experience with the dog. My name is Dr. Max Rustin. I specialize in marine neurobiology. Some years ago, I made a discovery that changed my life forever. I don't think anyone measures the consequences of what lays ahead of us. Our greed, our recklessness, will be our end. This is my story. Welcome to Sea Monster Cove. Now there's no sound on this one. Okay. So this is sort of raw footage. I love that though, that you have like a whole story to it. You know, that it's something you can really submerge yourself into, no pun intended. Uh, yeah, it, you know, that's exactly what it is. We're telling the story from, from a number of different media sources. Uh, where you're directly involved in this story or you're watching the um, the TV series or the uh, video game it takes you down there too, where you get to play what the hero does. So this is one of our habitats. And uh, this one doesn't have water in it right now or it just got filled. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna bring the dunk in. And this is where it will stay for its first week when it's being medically observed. That's so cool. I, I tell you what, man, when you first sent this to me, uh, I, I I was looking it over and I was trying to at first kind of figure out like, uh, because obviously, you know, I know that there's that there's not these, you know, prehistoric creatures, right? But I was trying to figure, because it looks so good. I mean, it looks so real what you've done here. And like, I had to kind of wrap my brain around like is this a physical place that i can go to where like where like these habitats you know you know are you know so the you know the the experiences you know like it, is it a real place is it just online uh but i mean it looks fabulous yeah these are motion picture uh ready um 3d animation we've got two guys who are just amazing at what they're doing a team out in the united kingdom 
Uh, this was created by Steve Clark. Um, but, it, you know, it's about as real as it gets. Hmm. And then we put you in the tank <laughs> and then you get to uh, go. Um, your virtual experience becomes uh, more hands on because the creatures react to you. So we'll pop out of here for a second into one of the uh, virtual experiences. Now this is um, from the deck of the Devonian, but it will take you to the uh, cage itself. So there's a number of cage experiences. These are called 360s. Hi, this is Chuck Caro, and as you may know, SeaMonsterCove.com launches real soon. But I need to ask you something. Are you ready? for the cage experience. So, <laughs> see you there. Yeah. So that so that's footage. Then that's uh, that's coming next week. You said. Yeah, that's um, a real nice ad and and, and video that we put together uh, for our new Chronosaur Yoko Chrono. That's cool. Now I know that you've had uh, you've had some different people do ads actually for you, do uh, testimonials. My my kids are we're we're, uh, we're big fans of Impractical Jokers, and I know that you uh, you had Murr do a, a a whole thing for you, and that was that was pretty cool. Murr was amazing. Murr was going for the Oscar, and and he got my vote. <laughs> So, so people can just go, it's, it's up and going right now. See monster cove. They can go and visit. Absolutely, yes. And yeah. you, and you said the price is now four ninety five. Four ninety five a month for the whole family. Uh, it was, you know, uh, includes everything, the video games, the, uh, the, the, the virtual aquarium experiences, the, uh, the library where we keep, uh, we made these, um, enhanced versions of my books with a uh, hundred or so color photos inside, which makes it more like a movie than just reading mm -hmm. uh, a lot of other things too. Wow. That's cool. I mean, that I, I've been there. I've, I've, I've looked over the site. I, I gotta tell you guys, it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, I think it's a really cool. Uh, I think it's a really cool design. Look, look, if you're just into, aquatic stuff i mean like prehistoric creatures and and things like that it's really cool if you got kids i think it's a it's a really great educational tool steve for for kids to be able to to see and and learn about these creatures uh it really is and plus they love playing in the cage because you, you couldn't see it because of zoom but um the cages uh, are 360 so if you use your mouse you can turn it in every direction and so the creatures are just circling you, but you don't know where they are. So you've got to sort of circle to find them before they smash your cage. Mm. Mm. I tell you what, I uh, when I first when I first went to the website and I was looking at like how you have like the the hotel rooms and uh, and everything that are backed up against the uh, yeah. the the main aquarium there with the with the mako shark. Uh, it's a it's a sixty three it's a sixty three foot prehistoric albino mako shark. Yeah, it's uh, uh, the uh, prehistoric cousin of the black demon shark, which is rumored to be in Mexico's waters. Hmm. Man, and 
yeah i mean it's just it's it's really cool because you just imagine yourself actually being in that situation man just being able to look out into a into an aquarium like that and see see this huge beast you know um and the fun thing is is that unlike in a real aquarium where, where things just circle around uh these creatures know you're there and they don't like it so they come right after you that's cool that's very very cool well um i definitely look forward to uh to checking it out more and i encourage everybody go to see monster cove dot com check it out hey 495 you're going to have a great time you're going to be able to see all this stuff uh experience it all for yourself and uh and see what uh what steve's been up to with uh with this really cool this cool website and uh i yeah i i look i look forward to seeing what more you do with this thing because it, it's it's like having your own little jurassic park kind of uh uh thing but like something that you can interact with and i think that that's very cool yeah, and the video games are amazing. They're, uh, the first one's going to come online in two days. Uh, it'll be, uh, I guess, uh, Friday the, uh, what's Friday, the 11th? Yeah. And that, that first one will be up, Run Layla to Run, where you get to play Layla, one of the uh, sharks, and, you, and you've got to escape from the aquifer and all these creatures are coming after you. And the next one will be out in a couple of weeks uh, where Sea Monsters Room, where you get to hunt these creatures or you get to play the creatures and hunt the man, the men. And stuff. Oh, that's cool. That's very, very cool. Well, uh, Steve, man, what a, what a pleasure and an honor to have you on today, man. And, uh, and to talk about this stuff. It's good, to, good. It was good to get to know a little bit more about you. I mean, we didn't even, we didn't even touch on, I mean, you, you've overcome a lot in your life. I mean, you, you briefly mentioned the fact that, that, uh, you've been fighting Parkinson's, but I mean, uh, man very i'm i'm super impressed with you man as just as a person man that you just you just keep going not a whole lot of choices here <laughs> but uh yeah. but thank you Nash. i appreciate that yeah well i mean you know i i it it really it really shows your your um your personality and your just your drive for life you know and uh i'm always i'm always happy and impressed when i see that you know we talk about it a lot. Life, life doesn't always give you exactly what you think it's going to give you. Um, but you still got to get up in the morning and keep on, man. And the fact that, you know, you're, you're doing stuff like this, you're, you got new movies coming out, you got, you know, all this stuff coming out, man. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really glad though, that, uh, that, that you, you've kept on because like I said, I remember just when I first heard about you years ago, and the Meg and the fact that, you know, you just kept on and you kept pushing and we got that Meg movie. Now we're actually going to get a sequel and uh, you know, and I'm looking forward to your, to the lock. That's uh, that's, that's all stuff right up my alley, Steve. So, uh, so you guys uh, at home uh, now, is it, do you, do you have an, another website or is it just the, the sea monster co thing where people can learn about you or do you have another uh, website that people can go to and learn more about you and your, uh, they can go to www.stevealton.com S T E V E A L T E N.com. And, and that's my website and they can reach me by email. They can get any one of my books, uh, watch trailers for the movies, watch trailers for the books, a lot of stuff there. Be sure to sign up for a free newsletter because, uh, it's through the newsletters uh, that I add characters to the books from, from mm. readers. So if you want to be a character in a book, give me a shot. Hey, there you go. There you go. I yeah, I, I could I could see a character named Enash taking on uh, taking on Meg or Lock Ness Monster. That'd be cool. That'd be fun. Might, might need you for a biblical story. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's that's where my name comes from. So that would be that'd be awesome, man. That'd be awesome. We actually have uh, we have uh, a, a viewer who uh, who wrote a Star Wars novel and uh, and put me in as a character. Me and my me and my whole family they they love our because uh, I'm a big Star Wars fan and people know it and so they uh, they put me and my family in as uh, as characters in their book and that. That, that was a cool honor. So that that's really cool. So I'll make sure that links are there for uh, for everything, guys, down in the uh, in the description of this video, so that you guys can go check out what Steve is doing. And uh, man, it seems it, it it feels like you got you got a lot going on, and uh, it's it's really really cool, man. So thank you. 
Yeah, appreciate appreciate you being here today. And like I said, guys, go. Ch- I'm trying to look which direction I'm at. Go check out Steve's stuff, man, and uh, and go uh, have some fun there at Sea Monster Cove. If you haven't read uh, his books, definitely pick up his books, uh, the the Meg series and the Lock and other things. He's got he's got the Shark Man stuff back there. I I I'll be honest, with you, I haven't read Shark Man. Is is that what's uh, what's that one about? That's uh, sort of like Spider-Man. It's uh, about a, a, a teenager who was uh, paralyzed from an accident that he caused and he lost his mother. And uh, he basically just wants to die. I mean, he, he hmm. was no more worth living to him. But um, he meets a girl in his new school and she invites him to, down to the lab where she works at the school. And, and he suddenly finds himself working with um, shark stem cells. And uh, he makes a decision that's going to affect the rest of his life. Wow. Wow. Well, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to read that one. That one sounds up like my like it's up my alley too, man. You, I, I, I love what you're doing, Steve, and uh, I appreciate you over the years and uh, just the stories that that you have have given to us as as readers and and viewers. And um, yeah, man, looking forward to seeing looking forward to seeing what the future holds for Steve Alton and uh, your collection of of characters and aquatic adventures man so thank you let's stay in touch absolutely come back and when we get a little closer to the movies absolutely well guys thanks for tuning in today like i said go check out steve and and uh his websites go check out uh sea monster cove it's something very cool i think that you'll enjoy and your whole family will enjoy and uh if you haven't uh read meg read the meg and Go see the movie. I uh, I just uh, we just rewatched it uh, not too long ago, and it's a it's a fun movie. Uh, you know who doesn't like watching a giant shark uh, go around eating people? I mean, and and the size, the sheer size of that thing is amazing. So um, uh, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you to Steve. And uh, like I always say, don't let anybody tell you that your fandom doesn't matter, and don't tell anybody that their fandom doesn't matter either. But seek to have good conversations and uh, and nerd out about this stuff, and that's why we get uh, some of this stuff. Is talking about, hey, could could a Meg still exist? Could these creatures still exist somewhere on the planet? Like Steve said, we've only explored just a fraction of uh, our own planet, and so you never know what's out there. So have some good conversations, go have some fun, and until next time, stay nerdy. We'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.